In one of the most monumental discoveries of the 20th century, we learned that the universe is not simply a static unchanging background, but rather that space itself expands as time marches on. It's as though the very fabric of the universe itself is stretching so that distant objects get farther and farther apart. We see this phenomenon in all directions and in all locations in space when we look beyond the local group. Nearly 100 years after it was all worked out it's still a puzzling counterintuitive phenomenon even for experts in astronomy and astrophysics. It's only natural to wonder if the universe is expanding what exactly happens to the fabric of space itself while this process occurs is the space itself stretching as though it's getting thinner and stretched out is more space constantly being created as though it were filling in the gaps that the expansion creates. And if the universe has been expanding for all this time what is it that the universe is expanding into are we expanding along with the universe this is one of the toughest things to conceive of in modern astrophysics. Fortunately, the latest data from James Webb are providing new insights that help shed some light on these mysteries. Join us as we explore what's exactly going on. Theoretical beginnings. The starting point of our conversation has to be general relativity our modern theory of gravity first put forth by Einstein. General relativity at its core is a framework that relates two things that might not obviously be related the amount distribution and types of energy including matter antimatter dark matter radiation neutrinos and anything else you can imagine that are present all throughout the universe and the geometry of the underlying spacetime including whether and how it's curved and whether and how spacetime itself will evolve. If we inhabited a completely empty universe or a universe that contains nothing within it at all no matter radiation or energy of any form you'd get the flat Newtonian-like space you're intuitively used to something that's static uncurved and unchanging. But what if we then considered the absolute simplest case of a non-empty universe if instead we were to put down a point mass in the universe we'd find out that space was curved in a particular way Schwarz chilled space. Any test particle that we'd put down onto our universe would be compelled to flow toward that mass following a particular trajectory. And if we were to then make our physical situation just a little bit more complicated by putting down a point mass that also rotates we'd get space that's curved in a more complex way. According to the rules of the Kerr metric it will have an event horizon but instead of a point like singularity the singularity will get stretched out into a circular one-dimensional ring. Again any test particle you put down will follow the trajectory laid out by the underlying curvature of space. These spacetimes are clearly much more complicated than a spacetime that's simply flat. However they are still static in the sense that any distant scales you might include or measure like the size of the event horizon or the distance between two arbitrary points within this spacetime don't change over time. If we could somehow exit a universe with this spacetime and return to it later whether a second an hour or a billion years later the structure of this spacetime would be identical irrespective of when we return to it. In spacetimes like these there's no cosmic expansion that's present. There's no change in the distance or the light travel time between any points within this spacetime. With just one or fewer sources of matter inside and no other forms of energy these model universes really can be static. Expansion and contraction of the universe. But it's a very different game when you choose not to put down isolated sources of mass or energy, but instead to fill your universe uniformly with stuff everywhere. In fact the two criteria we normally assume about our universe and which are strongly validated by large-scale observations are called isotropy and homogeneity. Isotropy tells us that the universe is the same in all directions everywhere we look. On cosmic scales no direction looks particularly different or preferred from any other. On the other hand homogeneity tells us that the universe is the same in all locations. The same density temperature and expansion rate exist to better than 99.99% precision on the largest scales. As far as we can tell our universe on large cosmic scales is indeed both isotropic and homogeneous. In this case having a universe that's uniformly filled with some sort of energy the rules of general relativity not only mandate that the universe must evolve they tell us how. The equations that govern the evolution of the universe are known as the Friedman equations derived by Alexander Friedman all the way back in 1922 a year before we even discovered that the largest most prominent spiral in the sky the Great Nebula in Andromeda was actually a galaxy outside of and beyond the Milky Way. The spacetime fabric of the universe if it's uniformly filled with one or more types of matter and energy must expand or contract according to these equations. The mathematics tells us with no ambiguity that this must occur. 
But what exactly does expansion or contraction actually mean when it comes to space itself? You see, space itself is not something that's directly measurable. It's not like we can go out and take some space and just perform an experiment on it. Instead, all we can do is observe the effects of space on observable things like matter, antimatter, and light, and then use that information to figure out what the underlying space itself must be doing to cause those effects. For example, if we go back to the black hole example, although it applies to any mass, we can calculate how severely space is curved in that black hole's vicinity. If the black hole is spinning, we can calculate how significantly space is dragged along with the black hole due to the presence of the black hole's angular momentum. If we then measure what happens to objects in the vicinity of those objects, we can compare what we see with the predictions of general relativity. In other words, we can actually perform experiments to determine whether space curves in the way Einstein's theory tells us it ought to in a wide variety of ways. As soon as the first conflict arises, as soon as a single observation is inconsistent with Einstein's predictions, we will have a compelling case for extending the theory of gravity beyond Einstein's general relativity. But a full 109 years after general relativity was first put forth that day has not yet arrived. To an incredible level of precision every observation matches and agrees with general relativity's predictions. Light blue shifts when it enters an area of extreme curvature and red shifts when it leaves. This gravitational redshift has been measured for stars orbiting black holes for light traveling vertically in Earth's gravitational field from the light coming from the sun and even for light passing through growing galaxy clusters. It's also been measured right here on Earth as light redshifts when it travels upward in Earth's gravitational field and blue shifts when it travels downward closer to Earth's center. Similarly other predictions such as gravitational time dilation the bending of light by large masses and the precession of everything from planetary orbits to rotating spheres sent up to space have all spectacularly agreed with Einstein's predictions. But what about the universe's expansion? When we think about the expanding universe scientifically the question we should be asking ourselves is what observably is changing about the things we're capable of measuring in the universe after all that's what we can physically predict that's what's physically observable and that's what will inform us as to what's actually physically occurring. Anything else is us placing a veneer a mask reflecting the limits of our own intuition atop what we actually understand about reality. The modern picture of the expanding universe. The simplest evolving quantity we can consider in an expanding universe is density. If our universe is filled with stuff then as the universe expands the volume of the space that this stuff occupies will increase. We normally think about matter as the stuff we're thinking about. Matter is at its simplest level a fixed amount of massive stuff that lives within space. As the universe expands the total amount of stuff remains the same but the total amount of space for the stuff to live within increases. For matter density is just mass divided by volume and so if your mass stays the same while your volume grows your density should go down. When we do the general relativity calculation that's exactly consistent with what we find for matter. But even though we have multiple types of matter in the universe normal matter black holes dark matter neutrinos etc not everything in the universe is matter. For example, we also have radiation quantized into individual entities like matter but massless and with its energy defined by its wavelength. As the universe expands and as light travels through the expanding universe not only does the volume increase while the number of particles remains the same but each quantum of radiation experiences a shift in its wavelength toward the redder end of the spectrum longer wavelengths. This redshifting effect is how the expanding universe was first detected and shows up in every galaxy and quasar we measure beyond our own local group. Meanwhile our universe also possesses dark energy which is a form of energy that isn't in the form of particles at all but rather appears to be inherent to the fabric of space itself. While we cannot measure dark energy directly the same way we can measure the wavelength and energy of photons, there is a way to infer its value and properties by looking at precisely how the redshifting light from distant objects evolves as a function of distance. Remember that there's a relationship between the different forms of energy in the universe and the expansion rate. When we measure the distance and redshift of various objects throughout cosmic time, they can inform us as to how much dark energy there is as well as what its properties are. What we find is that the universe is about 69% dark energy, 26% dark matter, 5% normal matter, and less than 0.1% everything else combined neutrinos, photons, black holes, etc. 
when we measure the properties of the expansion rate and the redshift distance relationship to the limits of our precision, we learn something else extraordinary dark energy behaves indistinguishably from a cosmological constant. This means the energy density of dark energy doesn't change as the universe expands dark energy is constant everywhere and at all times in space.